Tom Terrero Podcast 26, coming in your ears, as an old radio jingle used to say. And this might be coming in your ears from iTunes if you downloaded it. All my podcasts are now available to download from iTunes, thanks to a wonderful man called Brent, who helped me sort that out. So cheers, Brent. And yeah, download at your will. Listen to me at the gym when you're hoovering, whatever it is you do in the privacy of your own home. I don't really want to know, but enjoy. And thanks, Brent, again. Some housekeeping announcements before we launch into today's podcast, which is a Skype interview that's coming up with The Real Hank Moody. First of all, tour dates for my round the world crazy below the belt thing that I'm doing from mid-July to mid-August. I've managed to sort out the venues with help from local day gamers and day game communities. So cheers, guys, for helping me sort these venues out. All this information is on the front page of my website. So if you go to tomterrero.com, you'll see the following information. If you want to come to one of my free talks, then just email me with the subject being your name and the city. Lots of guys are emailing me and forgetting to say where they want to come, uh, where they want a free seat. So it's tom at tomterrero.com to get a free seat. On the 11th of July, I'm in London in uh, King's, King's College London, in the King's Building on the Strand from 6 o'clock till 8 o'clock in the evening. That's the 11th of July. 16th of July, I'm in New York City, Ripley Greer Studios from 6 o'clock till 8 o'clock. 21st of July in LA, I'm at the Tower Comedy Studio in West Hollywood, I think that is, from 7 till 9 p.m. 25th of July, I'm in Sydney, the Star Bar, which I think is in the CBD, 5 p.m. till 7 p.m. 28th of July, I'm in Auckland, New Zealand, downstairs at Atticus Bar, 7 to 9 p.m. And then 11th of August, I'm in Cape Town, upstairs at the Dubliner from 7 till 9 p.m. So to book a seat, like I said, it's tom at tomterrero.com. I'll reserve you a seat and send you more detailed information with maps, etc. If you want your wings to come, get them to email me separately. So I've just got them on record. That's the tour dates. The link for this podcast and all the other podcasts being on iTunes is below if you're watching this on YouTube. Now let's dive into today's slightly unusual podcast in that it's a Skype interview. Forgive the slightly dodgy quality, but I'm happy with it. It's good enough for a podcast with the real Hank Moody. No, not David Duchovny. But this guy could be David Duchovny in the life that he leads. He's a fantastic guy, a cool guy. He's a guy in his late 40s that I've day gamed with, winged with, traveled with last year and this year. He was married for many years. He'll tell you about that. He'll tell you about being newly single, day gaming in your 40s, being this traveling player, this seducer, uh, finding some kind of balance, what he goes for, the adventures that he's been on. It's just a fascinating insight. So if you're an older guy like me, 30 plus or even 40 plus, if you've been married like me or you've been in a long, long term relationship and you've come out of that, if you're thinking, can you be a player past your mid 20s? Do you need to settle down? Do you need to conform? Well, this podcast is for you. So cheers to Mr. Moody, as we call him for doing this. Let's jump straight into the interview. Enjoy. All right, on the line from somewhere in Europe, somewhere in Central Europe, we've got the one, the only, Mr. Moody. All right, Mr. Moody. Hey, Tom, how are you? Nice, good to hear you, and cheers for agreeing to come on Skype and spill the beans about your lifestyle. My pleasure. We've both said that we need to speak slow and low. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice sticking point still, and uh, we were doing that together in... Where were we gaming? In Poland. We were out in Poland. Yeah, in Poland. And now you're on a summer European tour. Yes. So three, uh, three or four months just uh, traveling around, taking in the sights and uh, really trying to, um, to perfect my day game skills. What a life. Um, so <laughs> let's kick off by telling the uh, guys. Yeah, I was eating too much ice cream, unfortunately. Okay, bring it on. <laughs> You've just, I, a little bird told me you've been in Italy. Yeah, yeah, that was beautiful. Not for day game, though, no, just for a beautiful holiday. Yeah, did you get on one of those mopeds? Yeah, we did. Oh, uh, oh. It's like taking your life in your own hands. So. <laughs> but, but fortunately, I actually have, uh, it's a Vespa, and uh, I've got one um, in the States that I drive around on. So I was a little skilled at driving it, but um, boy, they really... Uh, <laughs> did you feel like you were in a movie? Yeah, like Roman Holiday, except it was in color. 
<laughs> and you were speaking very slowly and very low. <laughs> exactly. So, let's tell the guys about you a little bit. Mr. Moody is American, obviously. You were, you were married for quite a long time. Yeah, 19 years. 19 bloody years. Yeah, a long time. And can we say your age bracket? Yeah, I'm in uh, my, my late 40s, very late 40s. Your late 40s. So, yeah. I wanted to talk to you on this podcast, A, to talk about now being single and being the, the new bachelor, the man about the town, doing day game, and day gaming as an older guy. So, uh, there's a lot to talk about here. There's a lot of topics, stuff that we've chatted about over beers, um, but you are more qualified to talk about this. I was only married for two and a half years. You were married for 19 years. Yeah, 19 years. It was actually, uh, it was quite a good marriage too. It was, um, it was one of those things where we met in our 20s and, uh, and I came to this theory that, you know, the person that you, you kind of meet and you grow with in your 20s is not necessarily the person, uh, that you're going to want to be with for the rest of your life. Yep. I mean, I think, I think it's very rare that people do that. And I, and I think even the percentage that do it, you know, what percentage really do it because they feel they have to stay together versus they want to stay together. Yeah. So, um, especially, especially when there's kids involved, but you don't have kids. Yeah. We don't have kids. Um, and we fortunately didn't really have financial issues that, that really required us to stay together. So yeah. we, um, we actually looked at ourselves one, one day and we were like, you know, we're really best. We became roommates, yeah. um, best friends. But there was no, there was so no attraction and romance after a certain point. And we said, why don't we just, why don't we just split everything and go our own ways? And yeah. we we remain best friends. And um, she actually knows exactly what I'm doing with uh, with day game. I love and that. um and I kind of help her with her dating life too. So it's a it's an interesting rom uh, interesting relationship. I would it's, say it's, it's very good that it's amicable because for you now it's not toxic, is it? You don't have this big anti woman. Um, let's go and get revenge. You know, I like a lot of, you could say, the pickup community, guys that have come out of divorces, they're angry men. No, not, none, none whatsoever. Mm. It's, um, yeah, I have a hard time even understanding that, but uh, I didn't come from that place, so fortunately. And how long have you been doing day game now, or been dating? So it's been, um, it's been a couple of years. Um, and really, I started, it's interesting, I started I, right after my marriage, I got into a, a relationship, kind of a long-term relationship with another woman that I had known um, when I was married. And I really had one-itis with her, yep. and super needy. I mean, it was just, I look back at it now, and it was just, mm. it was just debilitating. And I had, you know, I had I've been out of the dating market for 20 years, 20 plus years, and you're coming back into it, and you're thinking, oh, this is the one. This is really the one. Yeah. And uh, it just destroyed me. I was just, it just drove me crazy. And I remember the turning point was, um, and I would get very jealous. One one day she was just talking to a guy at a bar, and I just, I thought, okay, this is it. This is this is really it. I and I. I kind of just in a, a fit of anger said, that's it, I'm going to go out and find somebody else. You can find somebody else. And then I realized, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> it's just, it, was just, it was this revelation. This, it's like, I don't know how to go out and find somebody else. It's been out of the market for so long. Yeah. And um, after the relationship ended, I said, I've got to, I've got to figure this out because I'm not going to do online dating. Yeah. I, I refuse to do that. I don't want to go to bars. I'm too old, I feel, to go to bars. And day game just seemed like such a beautiful, natural way of, of meeting people. You know, right. not, not just girls to date, just uh, your skills in general. So, When you decide to do something, this is something great about your personality. When you decide to do something, you jump all in and you treat it like a skill set that can be learned. Yeah? Is that fair to say? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So you are now going all in 100%, certainly for the summer. Um, you're traveling with me doing day game. You've been to other continents, and now you're traveling all over Europe, just perfecting the day game skill set. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It is something I've found because I, I think I took a boot camp with you almost two years ago, a couple of year and a half ago, and then I yeah. tried to go back on my own and do it, but I was also doing, I was also working at the time, and I just realized I couldn't, I couldn't sort of get to the tipping point um, yeah. without immersion. Yeah, uh, it's like anything. I think you know, school. You don't dabble in school. You you go on and all in for a semester to learn a subject, and and I think you sort of need that immersion and, and really momentum. Yeah, yeah, momentum and immersion exactly. I should point out uh, because guys will be thinking this straight away. What success is he having? Who you know 
is Mr. Moody living the dream? Well, from what I've seen, for a man in his, his mid to late 40s, you're dating girls in their, well, everything from early 20s to late 20s, early 30s. Mm-hmm. You've, you've achieved some, without bragging, do you want to just give an overview of? Well, I've done, I, I, I have, I've kind of I've tracked, obviously I track my stats. I think the only way you can learn is really to, to keep, Keep track of yourself. Yeah. And I think I've done about uh, 1,200 sets yeah. or so in the last year and a half. Um, and I would say that that 1,000 mark rule is really accurate for me. I think yeah. once I hit the 1,000 mark, 1,000 uh, sets, which I did with you actually in, um, in Warsaw, I think that was the tipping point for me. Um, I started realizing that I wasn't thinking about what I need to do, what I need to say, and the results just came much more naturally. But... Um, you've had success though, yeah. I mean, I saw it with my own eyes, but where you are now, you've had success. You've had success in the states. I've had success in the states. Yeah, in fact, every um, every girl I've dated there, and I've dated, you know, in the last year, twenty, twenty plus girls, and every single one has been from from day game. Yeah. Um, not pure day game. Some of them sort of have been long. I would call it sort of long game, where I've I've met them in the gym, or I've met them walking my dog. Oh, or I met sure. them through friends, but I would say that the day game skill has been the thing that's allowed me to to pull the trigger. Yeah, because even just getting getting the number and then going on the date, it's the state the same principles still apply after that, huh? Right. Um, and we should point out you don't live in one of the bigger American cities. You don't live in L.A. or New York, um, so you've had to adapt your day game. Yeah, and that's the problem. I mean, I live in a city which I um, I'd actually been away from the city for a while, and I've moved back. And and it's, it's where I want to station my base. But for day game, there there are really no pedestrian. Um, you don't have the high pedestrian counts like you would in New York or yep. certainly not in London. And I've had to go to places. And I would say that it's almost impossible to, to get good at this if you can only do a few sets a day. You just don't have enough um, consistency. It would be like trying to, to learn to play basketball and, and shoot the ball and only be able to shoot one one every hour. But Come you, back every hour and shoot one. It just doesn't work. You've become very strategic, even in that city where you live, in using things like grocery stores, gyms, yeah, um, like hunting out high intensity areas. You've still made it work to some degree, but that's why you went on your tour, wasn't it, to get more volume? Yeah, in fact, I don't. I would say I'm not practicing when I'm home. I'm actually not in practice mode. I'm in. I'm in walking around, and if I see the girl that I really want, yep. um, I go after them, and it usually goes good. But it's not a place where you can practice. But but no, after I spend say a month um, in Europe, and I've I've done two three hundred sets, I'm really in the mode. I can come home, and I, I still have the momentum, and I'm able to go to Whole Foods, or I'm able to yep. to go to H and M, or uh, or even the shopping mall. It was. Uh, it was very fun in Poland when we were trying to recreate situations that you would encounter <laughs> in your home city. So we literally yeah. we found grocery stores that kind of had the same layout, and <laughs> that was it. It was like it, it was good, good practice. Yeah, it's co- coffee shops, grocery stores. I mean, in America, if you if you don't live in New York, you're going to have to go to co- uh, yeah. coffee shops, grocery stores, yeah. uh, and shopping malls. That's yeah. about it. But you you faced it. You slayed the dragon of the grocery store. And when the last time I saw you, you were doing fine in all these weird situational environments that guys really hate. Yeah. Because guys think of their game as this one trick pony where you jump in front of a girl, you know? But um, no, you are, you've got it well-rounded. I like it. Anyway, let's jump into the main topic, which is this eternal question. And you are extremely qualified to answer this question, right? Especially for the younger guys listening, maybe guys that haven't been married or they're thinking about long-term relationships versus being this man about the town, being this Hugh Grant kind of character, being this eligible bachelor forever. And it's often stereotyped into one or the other. You know, either you're just this under the thumb, miserable married guy, or you're this wild player. Um, Perhaps that's slightly naive for -hmm. guys that haven't experienced marriage. Um, and I've said many times that men have got this dilemma of wanting sex, obviously this huge biological drive to be polygamous. But of course, we have this drive for affection, for love. Love is you know, an amazing, wonderful thing beyond the biochemistry. So do you feel 
this dilemma constantly of thinking, am I going to be free and single forever or am I, am I looking for another one? I mean, what's yeah. your, what's your take? I've actually kind of gone through a stage. I've realized I've gone through a stage, I think right after my marriage, because I had sort of been with someone for so many years. Um, I thought that was the way forward. And as I mentioned, I got into this relationship with this other woman and it was, you know, I need to be in a relationship. Uh, in, in fact, a friend of mine told me he didn't see me as a player kind of guy. He goes, no, you're a relationship guy. Yep. Um, but really in the last year, um, I kind of flipped the other way and I realized that I'm actually happier when, um, I don't have what I would call the daily responsibility for somebody else's happiness, yep. which you sort of feel like when you're in a relationship. And in my relationships have always been where they've moved in with me. And yep. maybe that's that's a bit of the problem. But, um, you know, all of a sudden you're like, oh, you, you know, you're, you're responsible for this person yep. um, every day. And uh, no, I think. Um, so the, a cure for I always say a cure for the one itis feeling like when you went straight into that relationship after your marriage is just having options spinning plates getting leads which is certainly what you do now yeah you feel very abundant because you do have an abundance of leads yeah and it's not just having the abundance but it's knowing i think for me it's knowing that i have the ability to do it yeah and that was the problem with this girl as i realized oh my god you know if i if she goes away, I don't know how to get another girl. I'm going to yeah. be back with all these other guys trying to online date, and it's not a place I wanted to be. And it's interesting now that I know that I can just go out and get another date in an afternoon. Um, yeah. It changes your mentality that even if you are with one woman, you don't feel as needy because you know you can go out and do it. Yeah. And it's not necessarily having a stable of girls that you can call, but it's knowing you have the ability to do it. Yeah, That's critical, I think. Okay, let's, um, before we... We mythologize the single life, which is, which is what I often do, and I love to do because I am like you, nomadic at the moment and pretty much a free spirit. But marriage gets a hard time from the community. But what you didn't have kids, but there's stability in marriage, isn't there? There's there's something nice about obviously about uh, deep connection, familiarity, stable emotions. I mean, what were the what were the upsides of the of that of a long commitment? Oh, no, it's, it's all those things that you talked about. I mean, our, our marriage was very good from our, our business career. We both helped each other out. I think we didn't have to worry. We we had each other's back constantly. Yep. Um, so you're working as a team. Um, yep. uh, you know, you had somebody to come home to after a hard day, or you had, if you, if you needed to have some something and you couldn't be two places at once, you've got another person that's sort of on your team. So yep. that's the benefit of it. And you always have that. You have that companionship. Um, yep sort of the built-in, your built-in best friend um, yeah. that's there. And then you have that. So there's something very comforting about that. Yeah. Um, did, you, did you notice that feeling not wearing off but becoming heavy? Because a lot of guys panic when they feel that um, the domestication, you know, which is not, not, not so much. Um, what did wear off is sort of the romance and the passion. Of I think after a while it becomes more like, at least in my situation, it was more like we came roommates and brother and sister and best friends yeah. but you sort of lose the the um i think the romance and passion which uh it, you don't i didn't notice it as much because i was actually um as you know i, I had a pretty successful career and yeah. i was working and, and traveling around the world building this business so I, I i had something to keep my mind occupied yeah. um once that went away once i sold that all of a sudden i realized uh there's something missing in my life yeah um which is sort of the you know that spark and that chemistry so um, <laughs> i read th these are just two flippant quotes about marriage but they'll make you laugh um somebody wrote marriage is the number one cause of divorce <laughs> <laughs> and somebody somebody sent me this the second one i really like it's a bit harsh it says marriage is the guantanamo bay of friend zoning <laughs> exactly um yeah. which a lot of guys struggle to get out of and of course um, I can have sympathy with a guy who, where it ends, where the shit hits the fan, there's kids, there's money issues, and mm -hmm. I can understand why guys get really bitter and then get into manosphere kind of things, but luckily you don't have that. You've come out with a very good energy, a very stable uh, past, and your sticking points uh, really aren't to do with being anti-female or anti-marriage, are they? They're, they're, you're just interested in perfecting the craft of their game. Perfecting the craft and um, 
and it's not just the day game skill. That's one one skill in general that I I felt that I'd never. I, I tell people like this when I was when I think back to a teenager, there were certain things I wanted to do. I said I always wanted to learn how to fly a plane. I always wanted to learn how to you know jump out of a plane. There were things, and, but now I look back and I say that none of these things. Yeah. The only one thing that's held constant, I think, since I was a teenager, was to be good with women and people in general. That was the one skill that I sort of still wanted. You know, yeah, as I came in my 40s and I said, OK, I'm just going to this is something I need to master yeah. um, before trying something else. And, and it's really become a. Are you are you still finding? I mean, I, I still have this issue, just like you could say the Hank Moody personality in the show, because guys always think of Californication as the sex and the strippers and the fun. They mm-hmm. forget they forget that he's still constantly after his wife. Um and he's still pretty depressive about it. Not to say that I'm still after one girl or certainly not my ex-wife, but I still feel that tug because I think it's a biological urge and I have to be very careful of it when I'm even on a first date or a second date or I'm going into a longer relationship. I have to think, Tom, where is this going? Am I telling the girl the right thing? There's that constant dilemma of you know, sex for fun, but then having too much sex, which can make you feel a little bit um, of a hollow man. Uh, I know I'm painting it in extremes, but I, so, I, I have it to a degree when I'm doing pickup. I've always had it. Abundance makes it goes away, go away or I forget about it slightly. But do you know what I mean? There's, this, there's a biological urge. Uh, yeah, I, I think for me, I've gotten to the point now where I'm, I'm much more interested in connection. Um, so, you know, I, I, I try to find a girl I connect with. I mean, that's the whole point. And I have, sex is a natural um, sort of – it comes out of that. It's a byproduct, not a byproduct, but it's a direct result of the connection. Yeah. Um, so for me, I'm not looking to go out and just find a girl for sex. I'm looking for connection, and then sex is part of that, and it's a natural part of that. Yeah. And um, when there's no more connection or you feel that um, you've gotten everything out of a relationship that you can yeah. and you feel like it's stagnated, it's time to, it's time to move on. And I think I was telling you earlier, my, I think that for me in the last couple of years, that's been anywhere from one month to three to four months. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, um, it, it involves giving them the talk and not suggesting that, you know, you're going to get married to them. And I've talked about all this before, um, being a little bit more upfront, putting your cards on the table. But what we share is an enjoyment of an experience with being with a girl, not just the sex, yeah, like I, I go on trips with girls or do activities with girls or just have memories in cities with girls and you, mm-hmm. enjoy, you enjoy that too. That's the, that's the best part. The most memorable part of any of these sort of vacations I, I would go on to any of these distant lands to, to practice day game has been when I've connected with someone and then I get into a bit of a relationship. It's actually a bit of a problem for me because I end up wanting to go there to practice and then after a couple of weeks I end up finding a girl that I really enjoy spending time with and it yep. completely takes the yep. uh, a bit of the drive and the time away from the day game but you know that's yeah that's life that's what you want to do and that's what I do so yeah but it's keeping an eye on when that connection either a ends or b you can feel that you're it's getting quite serious or the girl thinks it's serious so I mean we share the same views on when to call it a day and how to call it a day. And Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's what a lot of guys struggle with, I think, because I've met a lot of day gamers who do day game for a couple of months, get a girlfriend and then immediately jump back into the one itis, that deep connection, but the needy connection rather than the healthy connection. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's why I recommend guys like you're doing, like play the field, have fun, go and do what you want. Um, and rather than jumping from one girl to another girl to another girl, which is a very common pattern, I think. Um, another thing I wanted to ask you about was this seeming contradiction in traveling a lot and having lots of fun versus having the base that you have. I know that you have a very stable base in the city that you're in with very stable friends, big, big roots, because that's where you come from. Yet you're traveling the world and doing crazy things. I mean, what's the what's the balance? Yeah, I mean, for for me, I I would not be able to just have a completely nomadic life. I just think that uh, you need to. That I think we were going to talk about this um, a bit later too. It's the um, 
it's the dilemma of how do you, uh, as my friend put it, um, mm-hmm. loneliness is the other side of freedom. Yeah, that's um, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, and it, it's so true. You're, you're totally free, but there are times, and he tells me because he was his perpetual bachelor that there many times he finds himself alone in his in his apartment, yeah. um, with nobody there. You know, just uh, yeah, basically talking to himself. Not not really, but um, but he said he doesn't want to give that up for the for the fact that he. He doesn't want to be tied down. Well, this, um, so for me, it's about having friends, and he does the same thing. He just has loads and loads of friends, girlfriends and boyfriends. The girlfriends are, are basically um, platonic friends, but it's just surrounding yourself with friends. This is Mr. Uh, G, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Mr. G. And yeah. Mr. G's the same kind of age as you? Uh, he's a few years older, yeah. And he's been a, he's been a bachelor pretty much his entire life. Yeah. Um, always looking for the, always looking for the one, but never finding her. Um, yeah. but he has a lot of friends and he's lived in the same city his whole life. So you can imagine how many friends he's built up over the years. And I think that's, yeah. that's the key to, to happiness is, is having friends. Yeah. Um, having connection with, with any human being, love with any human being. People forget when they talk about this myth of the lonely old man, um, which is something you hear females say more than males, actually. Mm-hmm. It's that saying that there's more lonely men in marriages than um, single men. Al Pacino talks about this. I found out today Al Pacino is a long-term um, hardcore bachelor, a bit like Hugh Grant. Um, I Randomly, interestingly, I found out also that Leonardo da Vinci, Beethoven, and Isaac Newton were all perpetual bachelors huh. and geniuses. Anyway, let's not get... Um, totally anti-marriage but you're right that if you're just nomadic and you're a completely a a free spirit who's just this nomadic day gamer i found it can leave you without um without direction you miss stability and so rather than being this lonely old man that people talk about because you're not married you're saying that the cure for that is a is a base of friends yeah and even a base of geography Exactly, a geography base and a friend base. And one thing, it's it's interesting, the lonely old man comment, because I've seen this where um, I've had older friends that have been in marriages and their entire life was their wife. And either they get divorced or, or she died um, and they've got nothing. They turn around and they haven't got the connections of friends. Their their entire friend was their, was their partner. And to me, that's a lot more scary yeah. um, than actually having – Built a solid base of friends, and then bring a, a girlfriend in to enhance your life, not to not to make your life. Yeah. Um, another bachelor told me that he goes, he only wants to have a girl that's going to enhance his life. He doesn't want a girl to actually have to basically make his life. Of course, or, one of the golden rules of game. That yeah. The girl should never be the number one. Um, yeah, quite right. That brings us on to uh, keeping gaming. I mean, everything is a game, obviously. Guy, I love how when guys get married, they think the game is finished. <laughs> they think it's like a harbour from um, the sexual marketplace. But as you know, I'm sure as I know, in a marriage, you still the same principles still apply. Um, but, but you gaming now as a single guy, um, chasing tail, doing day game, 40 plus. What are the practicalities of, of being a bachelor now, of... Of, I mean, your health, your fashion, your energy, etc. I think it makes you a better person. I mean, I find myself when I was married, I wasn't going to the gym. I wasn't really look, taking care of my health that much. I was just kind of in this, uh, we were drinking wine every single night. Um, I think you get into this sort of complacency. And I can tell you I've, I'm in a better shape than I've ever been in my entire life. Um, I'm eating healthier. I'm focused. I do yoga. Um, yeah. I I. I enhance my education the, the other thing that we did again it was a very comfortable relationship of literally we watch tv every single night and drink yep. wine yep. and fall asleep around 10 o'clock <laughs> you yep. know so i wasn't really um i wasn't really expanding my mind i would say uh, outside of work and my health certainly wasn't uh, wasn't getting any better so i think the beauty of day game is that because you want to put your best self forward um, you end up worrying about your health and, and how you look in the gym. So uh, I go to the gym five days a week. Yeah, you are um, hard, hardcore in Poland, man. You're in great that's shape. That's great. Yeah, it's you're, fantastic. I mean, your fashion is spot on. It's very tailored, it's, but it's not, it's not flashy. It's, you're not, we should point that out. That when guys hear of a bachelor in their 40s, they think, 
oh, okay, this is a guy splashing his cash. It's kind of like stripper game, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, you, I mean, girls don't know what you do. Girls don't know anything about you. You don't, you're not wearing an Armani suit to day game. Um, the results that you got from when I saw you, I mean, I've seen you in three different countries now. This is from girls being attracted to you for your <laughs> your charisma, your spiel on the street. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that was the thing. I, I went back and looked at some of the tapes from my first boot camp, and I was I was cringing because I was so quick to tell them what I did, and yep. it, it was I was telling them about me and how successful I'd been and all this, yep. and then I realized I watched some videos from you and some of the other guys, and sometimes you never really say what you do, yep. and it's beautiful. Like you, the attraction is is in the moment, and I've yep. kind of gotten the other way, and I don't. They don't really know very much about me. I yep. tell them a little bit because you've got to ground it, but it's. Yep. You know, they would have no idea how successful I've been. And I think that's important because you don't want somebody that likes you for your no. success, I think. No, it's 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 yeah. a, a temptation, which I'm sure a lot of established men fall into. But you've proven mm-hmm. that. I mean, after you sleep with them or after you date them, then if they find out about aspects of your life, it's kind of, it's okay. That's it's, fine. You've proven the point. Um, yes. So... But the dressing, the dress too, like go back to the dress. So I also didn't really care what I wore so much in the marriage because, again, you, you get complacent. Um, but, you know, my, my sort of signature thing is I wear um, polo shirts, just uh, sort of like golf polo shirts. But one thing I do do is I actually I have them tailored. So you know, if anybody's worn or seen a polo shirt, they yeah. still have this old-fashioned flap that hangs down halfway down your butt, and it just looks so sloppy. People are thinking um, of like Caddyshack. People are thinking Caddyshack, of you yeah, know, like I think, a big American golfer. Awful. And it used to be because you tucked the shirt in. Well, nobody tucks your shirt in anymore, but the yeah. shirt hasn't changed. So I always, you know, simple things. You bring it to a tailor. You have them basically cut the tail off. You actually have them take it in so it actually shows your physique. Yep. And they look fantastic. And yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a casual but very tailored look. And it doesn't cost very much to do that. What about tips on your energy? Because guys were asking me this on the last podcast about day gaming for all the guys. I, I've seen you manage your energy very well. Anything? Yeah, I think I think the key for me is I actually I stopped drinking. This is going to sound counterintuitive, but I, I stopped like two months ago drinking caffeine, and I've got more energy now throughout the day because yep. I noticed when I was drinking, and I, I I can definitely put my finger on that. Um, yep. Things like working out in the morning I think makes a big difference. Yeah. Um, getting getting rest, going to sleep. Um, Not, and re- you weren't doing these mammoth like eight hour day game sessions. You were very sniperish. Yeah, I can't do more than four hours. I completely lose um, maybe five tops, but it's just mentally and physically yep. uh, just too wearing, especially if it's hot out. Yeah, you know, we, we had some hot days, and you're just walking around, and and I think your results actually get worse. It's it's one of those things where you do peak after you do a few sets, but then the curve goes back down again. You just have to stop after a while. Yeah, concentrated effort. And um, are you still tracking your pedometer? That I yes. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we do a typical, I think a typical four hour day, what do we do, like 20,000 steps? Yeah. It's, an, it's amazing, it's like 10 miles. Yeah. Um, so what would that be, like 15 kilometers a day walking. So it's, it's, it's the greatest exercise you can do too. Um, exercise and then sex exercise. But how, exactly. How many months have you been on your day game mission for now, on the road? Uh, this is going into the third month. Jeez. Yeah. yeah. I, so. w- I was knackered after Poland. So, <laughs> but I think you have to take the breaks. So that's why the the Rome trip, the side trip. I'm going to do a side trip to Germany. Um, yeah. Every two or three weeks, you just do a side trip to kind of like recharge and enjoy in these moments with girls, like we said. Yeah. Um, because it's I think it's like a halfway house. I once did a talk on the two ends of the spectrum. You know, either the super bad boy player or the married chump, um, the bad kind of marriage. But there is this. Uh, maybe it's not halfway, but you know what I mean? You could be a super player or you can be a, I call it like a hustler with heart, the nice bad boy where you, you're at, you do have sex, you do chase girls, but like you said, then you bring those girls into your life. Mm-hmm. They, they know what you do. Mm-hmm. You go on these little holidays, adventures, and then you can have meals with them. I think because a lot of the guys see this in black and white, like I must never have a meal with a girl. I must never... Um, have a conversation with a girl. Yeah. So, I hope that for younger guys, this this serves as um, serves as a light. If there's a dark tunnel of light, just pick up a head, just sex ahead. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. 
No, I think it has to be part of your life. For me, it's part of my life. It's like anything. It just can't um, see it for purely for sex only. I mean, I don't see it that way. It's more to improve your skills of just being a better person and making. Yeah. I, I come with it from a place of, you know, you want to make, you want to leave them better than you found them. And it just makes you feel, it makes them feel good. Even if, even if, in, you know, if, if that has to do with being in set and they're not interested because they have a boyfriend or for whatever reason, yeah. you still made their day. That, that's great. Yeah. Um, and if you do have a connection with them and you have a good time with them, as long as they, they, you know, you're not lying to them about what you're doing. Yeah. Um, they enjoy it too. I mean, <laughs> they enjoy, they enjoy everything that we enjoy. Yeah. Um, the vibe is, the vibe is very beautiful. If you can reach that state. I mean, I understand why guys, and I recommend that guys go through a phase where it's like all in just for sex, go sex crazy, get reference experiences, but um, every single pickup guy I know who, who does this properly, you, you come out the other end thinking, um, you know, not believing in Jesus Christ our Lord, but you, you certainly want to be a better person for yourself mm. because it yeah. improves your mental health and your physical health and your body. But then you notice that that improves your game. Oh, it totally does. Yeah. Um, without that sounding too woolly. But that is, there, there is a balance. But a man, I mean, you're much more qualified in your 40s because you've you've experienced the whole spectrum, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and that was something I, I I I guess one of the things that I battle with when I am doing day game is sometimes it does feel a little bit like what am I doing? This this feels too fake. Um, and I think the way to get around that is to is to go in with the the mindset that you are going to make their day. Um, yeah. Because if you, if you go into it that way, then then it's not just me trying to get something out of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Practical tip. I just remember this from our time in Poland. Uh, we said that older guys, guys 35 plus probably, might want to do less teasing and more, more of the moody kind of stuff. Because a man um, with your success or your life experience, you kind of have a right to stand there and qualify the girls. You know what I mean? Mm, exactly. That's what we. I, I just think you have to be congruent with who you are. And, um, yeah, you know, if you're, if you're an older successful person, I think you want to, you don't want to dress like a, like somebody that would probably dress in their twenties, you know, yeah. which may be perfectly appropriate for them yeah. in their twenties. But I think you want to look a little bit more like you're a successful person, um, age appropriate. And yeah, you're not going to sit there and be a, um, yeah. try to be somebody that you're not. One of the things we tried in Poland, I remember was this bondish kind of approach like what would bond say rather than what would jim carrey say you know what i mean exactly exactly completely different yeah I'm not saying that you have to be the flashy provider at all but it's more it's as you said it's age appropriate oh. and there are you know i think that's the one thing too about um even going after girls that are age appropriate and i know there's a lot of different views in the community from um most people it seems like a lot of people want to be going for you know, obviously, if you're in your 20s and 30s, you're going to be going for girls in, their, in your 20s. But at my age, mm. um, I'm quite frankly, I'm more attracted to girls that are older. Um, yep. I always say, you know, beauty in your 20s is very common. Beauty in your 30s and 40s is, is rare, increasingly rare, the older you get. And to me, if you if I find again, because I'm in my late 40s, if I find a girl in her in her 40s, that's absolutely striking. I am far more interested in her than a girl in her 20s. It's just it's just me, my preference. Yeah. Um, but it just feels right. You know, um, you know what you're me. looking for. Uh, exactly. Not in an avoidance way to approach but certainly whenever I play games with you, you've got a very uh, strict criteria. You know what you want and you know, this is interesting, you know what kind of female figure is going to last because a hot 20-year-old girl is hot. She just looks hot for every guy. But when a girl's still maintaining her physique in her 30s and her 40s, you you kept pointing out girls saying to me like oh she that's going to last she's going to look like that for the next thirty years you know what I mean yeah exactly and then I think you can just not that you're going to keep them for the next thirty years but there's something about when you know what they're going to look like it's it's hard um, it's hard to accept something that's not going to be perfect for me yeah um, yeah but yeah saying we don't want to give guys the wrong idea as well that um, there are there's a subset of girls younger girls who have obviously the older man 50 shades of grey fantasy who absolutely went for i mean i'm 35 but they went for what you were doing as well girls in their early 20s 
Yeah, in fact, I've run into that more often than not. What I found, actually, that there's, there's quite a bit of girls in their 20s. I think when they're about 27, 26 and 27, I ran into quite a few girls that uh, typically they'd ask how old I was, and I would I would say, "What do you think?" And they generally guess much younger, like yeah. 40 or so. And I'll and I'll and I'll actually I was debating: do I tell them the real age, or I just kind of go with that? And lately, I've just been telling my real age, and I've not had one of them nope. that sort of said no. In fact, in, in two cases, a 27-year-old and a 29-year-old, they both told me that the most recent boyfriends I had was actually my age. So these girls specifically were hunting out guys yeah. that were you know, yeah. 20 years older than them. It's, um, mass- it's massively over-worried. I mean, guys panic about that, and I yeah. always say that. The girls that go for it really go for it. <laughs> yeah. Um, so and if they're not going to go for it, they're going to let you know right away. So it's it's yeah. beautiful because they'll they'll say no, I'm not interested. Yeah. And if they're interested, you can see a sparkle in their eye. And think about it: how often does an older guy approach a younger girl? Not that often. Yeah, in a, um, in a, in a calibrated, you know, good way. Yeah. Nice, Mr. Moody. Well, um, I think we've covered the points we wanted to cover. We could have we could do that again in a lot more depth, but. Um, We'll, t- we'll talk again at some point because our paths are going to cross, I know, in London and maybe in the States so we can um, record some more. Yeah, it sounds good. All right, mate. I appreciate that. Cheers. Thanks a lot. All right. Cheers.